You've just been watching a montage of preview files, downloaded from the website of Getty Images, the largest commercial archive in the world. I want to look at some of these images in more detail now, and share their stories. Starting with this everyday scene, which took place in downtown San Francisco, four days before the great 1906 earthquake. Every image tells a story, but every image also has its own story, of how it was made, and why, and of what happened to it next. This is an actuality film produced by the Miles Brothers, early pioneers in this popular genre. Their film studio was right here on Market Street, and would soon be destroyed. But the day before the earthquake, two of the four brothers took the film with them on the train to New York. When they heard about the earthquake, they turned back, but the film stayed on the train. It went on to travel the country and earned them $30,000 in rentals. When a film's copyright lapses, it enters what's called the public domain. This film entered the public domain sometime in the mid-20th century. In 2016 it was digitised by the Prelinger Archive and made available online for free. But it's also available on the Getty Images website, divided into 12 clips. Each clip costs between about $400 and $6,000 depending on its intended use. How can this be? It's because, when a work enters the public domain, all legal constraints over it disappear. If Getty have a copy and want to charge for it, they can. There were at least four different newsreel teams filming the Hindenburg's arrival on this day, but none captured the first moments when its great hydrogen tank caught fire. The airship was already tethered, the most interesting part of the landing was over, so they all stopped filming just before it happened. All the footage is now in the public domain. You can find low quality copies of most of it on YouTube. But if you want more than just a preview file, you'll need to buy it from a commercial archive. something be in the public domain, yet not publicly available? It's because the legal term public domain simply means out of copyright. When the copyright on an image lapses, 
it enters the public domain. But there's no law that says the image also has to be made freely available, to be released into the public realm. All an archive has to do when the copyright on one of its images lapses is to do nothing. The image stays behind a paywall and they can keep making money from it. And this isn't only a story of archive images whose copyright has lapsed. It's also the story of many images that were never copyrighted in the first place. Take this clip, for example. All films created by the US government, by law, are not copyrighted. This was filmed by the US Navy, so as soon as it was shot, it entered the public domain. But it never quite made it to the public realm. The only place you can find it now is in commercial archives. Getty has it. So does an archive called Critical Past, which deals only with US government footage. Critical Past's entire archive is in the public domain. Its business model involves licensing material that should be freely available. Luckily, Critical Past offers this clip for about half the price that Getty Images charges. It pays to shop around. This newsreel was filmed during the Cultural Revolution. Getty licenses this, too, though it was filmed in a place and at a time when private property didn't even exist. Is there some law at play here, by which everything that's public eventually becomes private? Here's another clip that migrated west. Who filmed this? Who flew into the most dangerous place on Earth to get this image? And why? I follow the video's chain of ownership backwards, from Getty to an archive in Paris. Do you know who filmed this, I ask? They don't. How did you get it, I ask? They don't know. All they care about is how many seconds of it I can afford. 30, it turns out. This clip was filmed on NASA's fourth moon landing. You can buy it from Getty Images, but it's also available for free on NASA's YouTube channel. NASA is perhaps the only agency in the world that creates public domain images and also puts them out into the public realm. Each time they landed on the moon, the Apollo astronauts planted a new flag and filmed it with ever better cameras. From the grainy 16mm black and white of Apollo 11 to the immaculate 35mm colour of Apollo 14. Flag and camera are symbiotic. Together they declare to the world the USA claims dominion over this territory. I wonder, did the Apollo missions keep going to the moon so they could film themselves better?
newsreel cameras document power. But what strikes me most from my exploration of the Getty archive is how much the act of filming is itself an expression of power. Men filming women, the rich filming the poor, colonizers filming the colonized. But no matter who filmed them, images also speak for themselves. And sometimes the story they tell is not the story that those doing the filming want them to tell. For example, are these villagers really waving here? Whenever I search a news archive, I always hope I'll find some images that aren't about power. And once in a while I do. But by and large, the past offers no surprises, as it is the source of all the inequalities and injustices that still exist. That's why I've made this film. Its aim is not only to share these images' stories, it's to release them from captivity. The eight clips that you've just been watching are all in the public domain. But all but two of them have, until now, been hidden behind paywalls. But now I've legally licensed them. I've paid the ransom. These few clips are, at last, in the public realm. Getty's license prevents me from sharing these clips individually but it doesn't stop me from putting them in a film, unaltered, uncut, and uncompressed, and then sharing the film itself. So that's what I've done.